Wake up, come on. Come on, wake up. I'm trying to fix you. Why can't you wake up? Fix you. One of the most annoying things when it comes to tech support is not able to do your job because the computer is asleep, turned off, or just hibernating. So how do we fix that? Well, let's find out. We can use Wake Up On Land, so let's do it. Ladies and gentlemen, my name is Irvin, also known as Kobo Man. In this video, I'm going to teach you how to wake up a computer that's on the same network so that way you can do your job, basically tech support. Why is this important? Because a lot of times you're trying to fix things on remote computers and you can do a lot of things remotely to backdoor into the computers to make some changes, settings, or even using a registry editor or using services or anything else. There are a lot of things you can do when it comes to having the computer turned on that is located somewhere else. And yes, even looking at the log files like the event viewer and such. So it's very important that these computers are turned on and that way you can do your job, right? So this is incredibly important. But what happens when they're not turned on, whether they're asleep, hibernating, or simply turned off completely? Well, you can use a thing called wake up on LAN feature that is available on a lot of computers. Now, the, admittedly, you have to use a tool in some cases to use Wake Up On LAN. Yes, you can use PowerShell to create your own scripts and do so. However, there are some settings and some prerequisites that are that need to be in place in order for this to work properly. So let's say I'm trying to fix things on this computer that's called tech support. And here we got remote desktop connection going. So if I click connect, it's going to fail shortly after because the computer is actually asleep. So in order to make sure that these computers can be woken up, they have to be on the same network and some settings need to be changed on all of those computers that you are doing tech support for. So here it is, here is the error, and it's the typical error where it says remote desktop can connect to the remote computer for one of the reasons, and we can see that a lot of things are there. So in order to wake this computer up, we need to know some things about this computer. For example, its IP address or its MAC address. Preferably its MAC address, but from the IP address, you can get the MAC address. So this information needs to be available to you, and if you have access to a DHCP server where you can look at the least IP addresses, that's one way to look up. So you go to your DHCP server, and then you go to least IP addresses, and then you will see a list of computers. You can browse through them and then find your computer, even just by looking at the name. So if you found like tech support, you go to DHCP server, scroll down, look at the least addresses, look for tech support, and then look what the IP address is and the MAC address as well. Right, so I'm gonna leave this up as it is, and I'm gonna open up another tool that's called Dameware. This is SolarWinds product, and this is basically remote desktop, sort of similar to TeamViewer in a way where you can take control of somebody's computer. So including the TeamViewer, this tool actually comes with a wake up on LAN tool. And this is located here if I click on send and then wake up on LAN. But before we do any of this, let me just show you an example of what happens if I try to connect with Dameware to this remote computer. I'm going to do the same thing and here it is you can see that i've already tried to log in here and it saved my credentials as well which is fine that means i've used this before so all this previous information is already stored inside of Dameware, which it actually makes it a lot easier when it comes to trying to wake up the computer later on i know you won't be able to necessarily have this but i'll show you another way to get access to the mac address and we're going to talk about a mac address and especially for people who don't know what the mac address is we're going to explain that as well but let me just show you what happens with Dameware. when i try to connect with Dameware, i'm going to get a similar error it's just going to say not able to connect to it in order to wake up our computer, we're going to need a MAC address for that remote computer that's over there somewhere that we're trying to fix, right? We're trying to wake it up, but we need its MAC address. You can get this MAC address information based off the history of the computer that was that was being remoted into. And for those reasons, you may have access to the IP address and the MAC address already that's already stored, as I've mentioned previously we're going to use the MAC address, which is the physical address of this remote computer. We're going to send some magic packets to it and we're going to wake it up afterwards. Now, what is a MAC address for people who don't know what the MAC address is? Also known as a physical address of any computer or any electronic device that's connected to the network. So whether it's physically or Wi-Fi, all of those devices need to have a unique MAC address, which is also known as physical address. Why? So that DHCP server can assign them an unique IP address. So this is how DHCP server, in some cases you can call that a, a router at home or just a switch, just to make it simpler to understand, will assign an IP address based off of that MAC address. So of course those MAC addresses always have to be unique to everything that's connected 
your TV, your phone, your gaming console, any anything that's connected to your Wi-Fi is going to have a unique MAC address. And for those reasons, we're going to have to also acquire it. Now, there are a couple of ways of getting this. In this case, if I, for example, use the dameware here to send the wake on LAN, you can see I, I have the history when it comes to the using this computer, as I've mentioned before, and I can use this information to resolve what the MAC address is. And you can see that already automatically populated here. So it knows what the MAC address is, in this case, the network adapter address for the remote computer is. So what if I don't have any of this information? So let's say I delete this, this stuff. You can also see if you can resolve it any other way. So we're going to delete all of this. All right, so let's get this information. So here is my MAC address. And this is how I know that this is my MAC address for this computer is because what you're looking at is basically my AT&T network uh, adapter, or I should say not adapter, my modem, uh, my uh, router, et cetera, et cetera. And within it, you can pull up the network devices, right? All the computers that are connected to your network and also historical data. So as long as you don't like refresh and it says clear and rescan for devices, it's going to keep this historical data and this will help you find it. Now, if you have access to the DHCP server or the switch directly, you can also look this up. And uh, how do I know? Well, because it says here it's tech support. That's the name of the computer. That's also known as the host name. So I'm going to need a couple of different information. I'm going to need this IP address. I'm going to click, I'm going to copy it. I'm going to go back to my tool. I'm going to put it in where it says IP address here. And I'm going to copy our MAC address, which is our physical address. The reason we need both is because we need to know what the last known IP address of it was. But most important, we need the MAC address. We need the MAC address because that's something that's never going to change. This IP address can change randomly, right? Because it's a DHCP, it's not a reserved IP address. And I can also show you how to do this. And I've also done this in my past videos talking about DHCP. I'm going to post a DHCP link to, so you can watch to my, my video, which is really good when it comes to DHCP. Uh, learning and how to make these reservations this and that anyways we have the information that we need so we have our ip addresses we have our mac address we're going to send wake up uh, command to it so if i click wake up it's going to say you need subnet mask require why does it need subnet mask, mask required it's because uh, it's basically if you have a network that's segmented into multiple subnets you actually need to specify which part of the network do you want to target when it comes to sending these type of packets so for this i'm just going to type in 255 Oops, dot two five five dot two five five dot zero. So that's a default uh, subnet mask address for pretty much any new network that you've set up. So if we just click wake up now, it's going to work. Now we can see that it switched over to the broadcast address, and we can see that it successfully sent wake on LAN uh, packets. We're going to check that here in just a few seconds. But I want you to see this. It says broadcast IP address. You can see how the broadcast IP address changed to two five five five. That's because it's targeting this subnet right here where it says 2555. So this is what I told it specifically, target this range in here for the subnet mask. So that means it's a segment of a network. And then it, you can see that it used this broadcast address to send this wake up packet to this MAC address that is located on this subnet mask, right? Very important. Now, if I was just to say specifically use this subnet mask, then I wouldn't have to type this in anyways, and that would work either way. So anyways, I'm not going to click away. I'm just going to bring this down so you can see. Matter of fact, I'm going to switch it back to tech support, and I'm going to click connect. And now it's going to wake up where our, well, our computer is already woken up. You can see that it's loading right now, and we are going to get into it right now. All right. So we are now connected to our tech support. If you look up here, we can see that we're RDP'd into it. And if I go to the system, you can see that this is indeed tech support computer that we are connected to. Now, let me show you a couple of different things that actually need to be enabled for this to work is for any of the computers that are connected to the network. First of all, you need to go to BIOS and make sure that Wake on LAN is enabled. This is going to be different from every computer. Well, not in the sense it's going to be different when it comes to the setting. It's just that it may be named something else right so and i'm going to show some examples of screenshots i'm going to put them right up here of how it may look like inside of your bios so these are just a couple of different uh, bios uh, screenshots that you may see some of them look newer some older anyways you're looking for a wake up on land and they will call it magic packets and this and that however 
On the computer itself, you also have to make sure that the network adapter is capable of receiving these packets. So we're going to go to our device manager and we're going to look at our adapter, our network adapter settings. So here is our device manager. I'm going to expand our network adapters. Here's our physical adapter here. I'm going to go to properties, right click at properties. I'm going to go to power management. I'm going to make sure that allow this device to wake up computer is checked and also only allow magic packet to wake up this computer. So you have to make sure that under power management for this physical adapter this is enabled as well as the bios that i've mentioned previously okay so this is all set obviously it's working we've just demonstrated that but let me just show you again we're going to do cmd now this is on the remote computer this is on the tech support computer i'm going to ip config all so this is going to show me this the, the information i'm going to scroll up and i'm going to show you that the mac address is matching here see here's here is our matching address here dc4a that ends with 79-98 uh, and if we look at here it's the same thing right it's the same thing except the colons a lot of times when you're uh, setting up mac addresses for example in dhcp you don't need these colons or anything like that you wouldn't have any dashes or colons it'll be all one string together all right so i hope that's clear and uh and understandable and the reason why it's important to actually have this capability really helps with tech when it comes to troubleshooting tech support issues for computers that have been turned off asleep or hibernating all right so let me pull up a dhcp server and show you how you can look this up if you have access to admin tools so here it is windows administrator tools and if you have dhcp access at least to view it, if nothing else, you can actually look at the least IP addresses. Now, this DHCP is a fresh, kind of a fresh install, to be honest, so I don't have any computers installed in here. Um, I have a lab uh, instructional video that I've created in my previous video where you can create this as well yourself, but I also highly encourage you, again, to watch that DHCP video that I've made that has examples of computers with least IP addresses and whatnot. Least IP addresses, I don't know if I mentioned it already, but anyways, if you want to find out what the IP address is and the MAC address is of the computers that are connected, that way you can find up, you just have to go to the IP version four, here it is in DHCP, click on address leases, and then you'll have a list of all kinds of computers listed in here. I'll put in a screenshot here just to show you how it looks like. But if you scroll over, you can see that the unique ID here would be the MAC address. So you would have a MAC address over here, but then also at the same time, you would have the IP address. And of course, under the name, you would look for tech support. Then you'd have an IP addresses, and then you scroll over, and then you would have the unique ID, which would be the MAC address for that, uh, for that computer that you're trying to connect to. So that's one way to find out what that is. There you go. I hope you find this useful. I think it's really useful, especially when it comes to doing remote type of tech support. I know it's a bit of a shorter video than I usually do, and I think that's perfectly fine in this situation, but I feel like it's super important for everybody to know how to do this and uh, at least ask for these type of tools to make your job easier. That's the whole point of this, to make your job easier and make it more fun, I suppose. <laughs> All right. I hope you enjoyed it. Have a good day. Take care. Bye-bye.